Hello, this is Ash from Crack Minis. Today I am going to be making some brutes for my Turnip 28 Tallman Army. Also, I'm going to be uh, making a snob. Well, actually, two of them. Just watch. To do this, I decided to use Sprugu. Originally, I was going to use uh, Super Sculpey or some other clay, but Sprugu seems to be the best option, and I had some to hand leftovers from when I was building the Great Gajar for my last Turnip 28 video. Building the basic form for these is pretty easy. Um, Basically, you just need an armature and sprue goop, and you jam it on and make yourself a little thumbly from like Spy Kids. You know what I'm on about? Those ones with like the horrific thumbnails on the back of their heads and stuff. Well, was at the front. Remember? Anyway, yeah, just jam the sprue goop onto the armature and give them an almost human like shape without actually being human. I've just had to Google whether the thumbnails are on the front or the back of the head, and they're um, on the front and they're actually called thumb thumbs, not thumblies. Moving on. When uh, sprue goop's fresh, it's really pliable, which is great when you want to get it on there, but if left unattended, it sags. So you half mess about with it a bit as it's drying and setting. This worked well for me because I didn't really know what positions I wanted the arms and legs in as far as that so it gave me plenty of time to work with it until I got something that I liked because I'm indecisive. Made a snob. It wasn't my original intention to make a snob in this video. I was just going to do the brutes but I couldn't resist making big figs. Yeah I made a snob. It's a lot harder making the bigger ones especially considering I didn't use anything underneath. I should have wrapped the armature in tin foil before I stuck on the sprue goo. I can't say that I'm going to use tin foil in the next one because what I found with this is it allowed me some freedom when I was adding on more sprue goo to make the form the way I wanted it without the fear of having the tin foil underneath blocking me from the final shape that I wanted. See, I didn't just make these two models, I made more, <laughs> as you can tell from the thumbnail and my intro. I just did them off camera because it was just the same thing, smashing them onto armatures bending them into shape these brutes to look like they were part of my tall man army and if you've watched that episode i wanted to keep that sort of style but i couldn't decide whether i wanted it to just be wood or if i wanted to try and make it look like it was steel and fit more in the themes of the stories i tell so i made a compromise and decided to do both so for the armor to look right i needed to bulk them out i haven't really picked a name for him yet so i'm gonna call them the steely boys or the metal marauders or something Anyway, to, for them, I wanted to put EVA foam underneath to make my life easier when I was putting a plastic card on later. I couldn't decide what to use for weapons. Uh, I mean, in the rule book, it says that it could be melee or have rifles. They got shooting range now. And it's model agnostic, so I thought, you know what, I'll just stick with melee. I prefer the look. Uh, and I raided my bits box and just grabbed some random hands with weapons attached to them. I was covering the fingers themselves, so it didn't really matter that the hands were a bit small for the bodies and the wrists. Once I got the hands in place and the EVO film on, I um, stuck on little strips of plastic card to where I wanted. I was putting the plastic card on, I didn't want to go too heavy with it, because I wanted to leave some skin exposed. Basically, I wanted the model to feel like most a twisted version of a human being, so I needed that skin exposed so I could paint it to look like the skin. Also hide those features that make it more human. Like the hands and the feet, the face. The so good thing with the plastic card is the smaller you cut it, the more you can do with it. Well, it sounds silly, but I never really thought of it that way before now. I just assumed it would be good for panels and things like that, but you'd be surprised how much detail you can get from a little blank piece of plastic. I probably could have got away with using maybe a butter tub. Just any sort of plastic, really. It doesn't have to be plastic card. So if you want to make these at home, eh, anything will do. And you can even use clay for the base like I was going to originally. I made two more exactly the same. And then I moved on to the ones made up with wood. I think I'm going to call those, because they look more like my wicker man, the wicker men. The armour on these, I used a mixture of balsa wood and coffee stir sticks. I could have got away with just using the coffee stir sticks, to be fair. I just had off-cuts of balsa. I didn't need the EVA foam for these ones. I wanted to give them a more primitive feel as well, so I literally just stuck with the wood for the vast majority of the build. Just layering it on top of each other just to give them that bulk without actually having to use the EVA foam. I did use plastic weapons for these as well. The reason I used the plastic weapons was just to save me some time. Also, I didn't trust the longevity of having little sticks poking out for like spears and things like that, just in case. Because I plan on using these uh, in games, so I didn't want anything that could just randomly break off. The vast majority is know the pain of putting something away. Taking it to a game, pulling out of the box and there's an arm missing or the tip of a finger. May as well put it here. Please like and subscribe. I recently hit the 1k, which I'm well chuffed about. Might as well see how far I can get. Uh, thank you for everyone who has subscribed as well. 
Also, thank you for all the comments I've been getting. I enjoy responding and I enjoy reading them. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so that puts us on to the big fig. So, I did make two. One was just out of wood, but it was more of the same footage that I'd just shown you. So, I decided that it was best to leave that out and just concentrate on the one that I was making that matched the Steely Boys. Anyone could think of a name better than the Steely Boys. Please let me know in the comments below. I don't want to be stuck with it. That doesn't mean you're not going to see the top that the other top that I've made, but. Uh, it's going to be more during the painting phase because I'm going to go into batch painting and how I do it. This top, I wanted it to look imposing, which I was quite happy when I read that the bases can go up to 60 millimeters, which can be a lot of play when it comes to the size of the thing. I wanted it to look like it was ruling its other its followers by fear. Because of that, I didn't want to just rely on the plastic card like I did with the others. So I raided my bits box. I used a lot of different pieces from a lot of different places, like uh, robo gear, tanks, a gun because I'm going to be talking about the painting in this episode, I may as well talk about how these models fit in my world. Uh, so these guys are the planet that I'm building's native population. Uh, once the Great Arrival happened, which is when all the humans and other alien species ran to the planet to escape this great cataclysmic event that isn't spoken about or remembered by the mass majority because it happened so long ago. These people were displaced, forced, it's become nomadic and tribal to survive. Some were more accepting than others of this arrival. Those who were traded freely with the humans, who weren't accepting though, they retreated. They went to the harshest areas of the planet to hide away from these alien races, to grow their numbers to get stronger. Being well suited to the planet's environment, they adapted. Their skin got harder and tougher, protecting them from most basic weapons, and only energy weapons can break the skin. They don't need armor, but they wear it. It isn't to protect themselves, it's to instill fear in their enemies. They bolt, strap and screw makeshift pieces into their rocky skin. The vast majority of them favor wood, as it's a more natural and from their world, but some have begun to use the alien steel. This adds the protection from laser weapons, making them even more dangerous. And they fight with found, salvaged and repaired weapons discarded by the other alien races. They fight amongst themselves, making them stronger and readying themselves for war, trying to decide who to lead. It's normally the largest ones that lead the clans. They grow as they age, so with that size comes wisdom and the knowledge of ways to defeat those who have oppressed them. I hope that was alright for the story. As I was building this I realised something was missing and that was the actual element of the plastic card for the hands. I covered them in it just to unify him with the other troops. I didn't want him looking too much different than them. He obviously needed to stand out because he's the leader. He needed some sort of sameness. Uh, Here's the one I made with wood. It fits a lot better with the Wicked Men theme. It's very easy to make, similar to the wooden ones, which is why I didn't show me making it. Okay, so that brings us to the painting. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about batch painting. Batch painting is a way of making your life easier when you've got an army to paint. You've all been there, you've got a sea of grey, you've stuck it all together, and you don't know where to start when it comes to painting them just because you're overwhelmed. So, what I like to do when I batch paint is I like to grab five or six models, I prime them. Now, in this case, I did the Xenophil highlight. You prime your models however you like. I paint using layers just because it was the way I first learned, and it's the way I find easiest. So what I do after I've primed these models is I find my base coats. First, we start with the skin. I used a purple for these because it lends itself to making the skin look sore. I try my best to get it into all the little nooks and crannies because if they're hard to reach, they're also hard to mess up with other paints later on. You do this one by one. So as soon as you get that skin done on the first model, you move on to the second model. As you go, it gets easier. Remember we're turning a marathon into a sprint, or lots of little sprints rather. So it's not about overwhelming yourself and rushing through to get to the next step. So once you have this first initial paint done on all your models, your first one should be pretty much touched dry and ready for your next set of base coats, which will be your second colour. In my case, it was this lovely baby poo brown. That's not actually what it was, it was actually Vallejo mahogany air but as soon as it hit that white it looked like baby poo once i've got my baby poo brown on all the models i put to skin tones again this time i use an actual skin tone not a purple and i go over the top just getting the edges get it ready for a wash after i do this dry brush the models with the wood i dry brushed them white this actually worked really well with the brown 
and it give it a really distressed effect without getting too chalky which is something you have to worry about when dry brushing because the last thing you want is your model looking chalky for all the steely boys I really hate that name um, <coughs> I dry brushed them silver any silver will do because we're going to be covering it again later on um, this leaves all that brown in the cracks and that will lend itself to rust effect later on I completely forgot about adding on little colour details now because my wicker man uh, has green tops I wanted to add green onto these models so they fit in with it I made a mistake with the green I used a green that was too dark and my wash completely hid it I'm going to leave it in just so you can see the effects after I finished up with those greens I decided to put some reds I know I have a very specific colour palette at the moment with a lot of greens and reds going on I am working on it for something like this I wanted to play it safe and stick with what I know I know that greens and reds work so well together it also calls back to what I've painted in the past I will be working on it for the next episode once I got the red on that was it for the wood coloured covered models for um, now and I focused mainly on the ones who were metallics I got out some rusty orange paint and I dry brushed it on it, to non-specific parts across all the models that were supposed to have steel on them and this is just to give me an idea of where to go once I've washed it once that was done it's time to wash them. So, as with all my other models, I use a, an acrylic ink wash, which is acrylic ink, air thinner, from Vallejo, or um, a drop of washing liquid. <laughs> Once I've applied it all over the model, I dab it off with tissue paper, just to remove the excess. This was a bit where I realised my mistake. You know, the green I used was too dark, and the wash completely just hid it. So I got a brighter green, and I went over most of the spots that I could find that I had had green on it originally um, that's the thing with washes sometimes they help sometimes they hinder I was overall though happy with the results and then I realized I made another mistake I hadn't properly based any of the models so luckily I had some terrain paste to hand and I scraped it on it and did my best to make it look like a mud effect painted it with some damp earth paint from AK that about brings us to the end so don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already remember comments Hopefully you have me pick out a name for these guys. Do not like the Steely Boys. And then you enjoy your spinning. See you next time.